Hi, my name is MC. Uh, I'm a dog musher. And then uh, today we're doing a one hour, 45 minutes loop. So we'll just uh, ride in the sled and then we do a little short 45 minutes loop and then we'll be back to the resort. Where are we? We are at 10 mile in the Yukon. Great. We'll bundle you up. We'll bundle up. What's our temperature today? Um, you know, probably minus 12 or 13 or so. Can't quite tell. Maybe 15. It was 15 this morning. It warmed up since. I guarantee you that one. Woo! What are the names of your dogs? Uh, today in lead we have uh, Rosie Rocket and uh, Eranti Limbo. And then behind we have Kootenai and Rummy. Uh, in third we have Tonka and Avenger and then we have Chili and Rainy in the back. They're little puppies that are loose. Oh yeah. There's a five months and we always give a theme to um, every litter to try to find name. So it's the chocolate bars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How old are they? They're maybe five months or so. Oh, cute. They weren't supposed to follow us, they're the neighbor's dogs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so they're so. not even sled dogs. They are sled dogs. Oh. They will become sled dogs. They haven't pulled yet. They're too young. Oh. We start them at about six months. Six months? Yeah. yeah. So, we're gonna do a bit of an extra loop. Just try to drop them off at home. Okay. See if they're gonna go to their house. <laughs> how, do you tra how do you start training a dog from scratch? You just put them, like, see how they follow the team like this? Yes. And, um... It's kind of like when your your big brother is a basketball player, you just want to play basketball too. It's the same thing. So they just follow the teams like this and when they're six months, you just hook up a small team and put them on there. And I'd say 95% of them just know how to pull. Wow. Um, they they just... don't know how to behave on the line. That's always a big problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, most of them know how to pull. So you just start with really, really small distances and then just keep building it up. And as you build it up, they learn to pace themselves and if they really don't behave on the line uh, we always put older dogs with them and older dogs quite a bit of, quite often if you don't do your job they're really grumpy and they get mad at the puppies so that's how they learn so we don't actually have to teach them all that much um, a lot of it just comes from the like being on the line with the older dogs that's all they learn yeah that's pretty handy yeah that is really <laughs> handy how many dogs do you have uh, personally I have 15 dogs and, and what kind of dogs are these? They're all Alaskan Huskies, which is uh, a big uh, mix. Mm. So the we call them the Disney Huskies, the pretty blue eye ones. Uh, those are the purebreds. Um, they're called Siberian Huskies and Malamute. And um, pretty much what happened is in the gold rush, they needed so many sled dogs suddenly to, for transportation. They took whatever, whatever, whatever they could find and bred it to the huskies that were here. So they'll have a black lab in them, shepherd, uh, uh, pointer, it's really everywhere. So, so they're a bit of a mix. It's an extremely big mix and uh, that's why they all look different and they're not officially recognized as a breed because they're too, they're too different. Yeah. Um, but uh, we recognize them and uh, the reason why we use them is probably because they had a lot of hunting dogs in them. They're faster than the purebred. Wow. So they're really good racing dogs, long distance racing dogs. Uh, maybe not quite as strong as the purebreds, but um, quite fast. And do they love to run? They, yeah, that's all they want to do. <laughs> that's all they want to do. How do you choose the lead dog? Uh, the lead dog is a dog with a lot of confidence and um, of course, he has to be a little smarter than the other ones because oh, they know the left and the right. So we always use H for left and G for right. And um, so they need to understand that. So whatever, whatever, what we do is whenever you see a puppy, well, not necessarily a puppy, but like a dog, a year and a half or so, that has a lot of confidence and that never looks back and always want to go forward, you just give him a try and lead with an older leader and see how it does. Um, and pretty much as long as they follow as long as they follow the older leader uh, they should learn their commands within a few months um, 
it's rare one just knows they're coming in. And so the, does the lead dog always, is the lead dog... Always the lead, yeah. is the lead dog always the lead yeah. dog? No, um, we'll, because the lead dog is pretty much the most valuable dog. Uh, we'll try to train as many leaders as we can. Yeah. And uh, it's a lot of pressure for a dog to be a leader. Yeah. So it's really important to constantly rotate them. If you always use the same leader, they get burnt out and they don't want to do it anymore. Too much pressure. I see. So it's really important, like, you know, you'll use two for a little while and switch them. What kind of, what kind of pressure is it? Uh, they know they have the entire team depending on them. Right. Um, of course, when it's a when you're on a trail in the woods and there's a really obvious junction, it's not so much pressure for them. It's really easy. Mm -hmm. But once you're in the, on the lake and the trails, you can't really see them all that well. Then they have a lot of decisions to make. Other than me, like they have to find a trail. Yeah. Um, or if you're in a whiteout, or so it can be extremely stressful for a dog. And some dogs. Some leaders are really good in the trees and then as soon as you take them on the lake, they just can't handle it. That's too much for them. They can't do it. Um, so every leader is have their strength. Just like humans. Right? Some, some, some people are good to be leaders. Uh, yeah. They some followers. Some people can handle pressure and others can't. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 